Hi everybody, meteorologist Brian Bennett here with your red tide update for October 23rd, 2018. And we do have some changes to talk about. The red dots here along the coastal part of Pinellas County representing water samples that picked up high concentrations of Carinia brevis. So Pinellas County still not really doing the greatest and not really the greatest water quality down through Anna Maria and Holmes Beach and all the way to Sarasota. This area between Sarasota and Venice had actually started to improve a little bit over the past couple of weeks, but we're starting to see red tide start to creep its way back in. So low to medium concentrations of red tide between Sarasota and Venice as of some water samples that were taken yesterday. Heading farther south and conditions actually improve for most of Captiva and Sanibel Island, Fort Myers Beach down through Naples. We're only looking at background concentrations. So right now the beaches actually aren't doing too bad in this general vicinity, which is very welcome news. This is ground zero for where red tide began a year ago. One year ago, we had red tide begin in this location. So the folks here are tired of it, as of lots of us up and down the Gulf Coast, but especially right around Cape Coral and Fort Myers. Fortunately, again, though, right now the beaches are doing okay, but there is a little bit of red tide still lingering off the coast. And if the winds don't end up causing too much of a problem, it should, for the most part, remain off the Gulf Coast. Another feature we'll have to watch here too, of course, is this is where the mouth of the Caloosahatchee dumps out into the Gulf of Mexico, and that brings the nutrients from, of course, the septic tanks, big sugar, and agriculture around Lake Okeechobee, and even quite a bit of extra nutrients being picked up in the Caloosahatchee River Basin as all that heads out into the Gulf of Mexico. So let's hope those nutrients being pumped out in this area don't help to re-spark any red tide right now because I'm sure folks here are definitely appreciating the decent beach conditions. Of course, offshore, since we did have a really bad red tide event that's been pretty prolonged, we're looking at a hypoxic environment on the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico in this location. That means that the marine animals are having a tough time surviving the crabs and, and other creatures on the bottom due to the lack of oxygen. Over on the east coast, we're looking at red tide. Uh, essentially from about the Melbourne area down to about Fort Pierce, north of West Palm Beach. West Palm, Miami, not doing too bad right now. Uh, the worst area is right around coastal Fort Pierce. And Cocoa Beach has actually improved, uh, going from a high concentration of Carinia brevis to only a background concentration in a matter of days. Here's a look at the latest red tide satellite here. And the area I've outlined in the orange here is where I'm picking up on some type of either low to high red tide or Carinia brevis here on the satellite image. And that stretches about 130 miles to the south. Again, the beach locations around Sanibel are doing okay, but still seeing a little bit of red tide linger in some splotchy areas offshore. It's not a persistent nonstop area of red tide offshore, but nonetheless enough to to include it in our area of red tide here. And again, let's hope this area continues to improve and doesn't start to uh, to go downhill again. But that's just something we'll have to, to wait and see. Here's a map here. This map actually was provided to me by Scott Shapiro. So thank you, Scott, for providing this. There are several folks that go out several days per week, I believe four days per week, and take water samples up and down Pinellas County. The red dots representing that we're seeing high concentrations of Crania Brevis from Indian Rocks Beach down through parts of Madeira Beach and Treasure Island, St. Pete Beach, Maximo Beach. Uh, Matt Passagrill, as of yesterday, looking at a medium concentration and medium to low concentrations of Crania Brevis right around uh, Fort DeSoto area. Head north of Clearwater Beach towards Honeymoon and the conditions start to improve. All right, so what about the forecast over the next seven days? Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the Gulf currents and then the wind directions. Not necessarily a one-to-one -one correlation, so I separated the two. For as far as the Gulf currents go, where is the surface bloom of red tide going to head over the next seven days? And the bottom line from this is onshore currents are a bad thing because that drags the Carinia brevis towards the shore. So on your Wednesday, we're looking at the surface bloom being pushed a tad to the west, so that's a good thing. That's why I put good right there. And then heading into your Thursday, we're looking at okay conditions. And then on Friday, we're looking at strong 
currents moving toward the Gulf Coast, probably increasing Crania Brevis, so bad conditions on your Friday for the southwest coast of, of Florida where we're seeing red tide impacting areas. Not the greatest on Saturday with that onshore component, not the greatest on Sunday, not the greatest on Monday, and then the current started to shift a little bit on Tuesday when we're looking at okay conditions. All right, the wind direction. This controls whether you're going to be having trouble breathing at area beaches. Are you going to be coughing or having throat irritation at the area beaches? So on Wednesday, we're looking at winds generally blowing out of the northeast. So we're looking okay, as I typed in right there. And then moving into Thursday, not really the greatest breathing conditions with the winds shifting towards an onshore component. And then on your Friday, not great breathing conditions. In fact, bad breathing conditions along area beaches with the decent onshore winds. That's going to stir up the airborne brevitoxins and make the, uh, the breathing conditions kind of bad on your Friday. And Saturday, an onshore component again, so kind of bad on your Friday. Sunday, looking okay. And then on Monday, another cool front passes through, and that brings us a northwest wind component. And that means bad breathing conditions once again on your Monday. Tuesday, we start to recover. The bottom line, strong onshore currents and winds are likely, especially on Friday, Saturday, and Monday of this coming week. And the result of that could be an increase in Crania Brevis at southwest Florida beaches. It could also result in a slight increase in fish kill washing up on a few of the Gulf beaches. It also means larger waves. Obviously, if you have winds blowing Toward the shore, you're going to see larger waves. Larger waves allows the thin shell of the Crinia brevis dinoflagellate to break open and release the toxin, which means more airborne brevitoxins, which makes it difficult to breathe. So avoid the beach locations and highly concentrated red tide areas on these days if you do have trouble breathing. Again, those days, just to go back here, uh, that would be Friday, Saturday, and Monday would be the days you might have a little bit of trouble breathing uh, on at area beaches. All right, switching gears, east coast of Florida real quick. Cocoa Beach has improved going from a high concentration of Crania Brevis all the way down to a background concentration in a matter of days. High concentration still around the Fort Pierce area, but over the last week or so we've seen the red tide start to shrink a little bit on the east coast, and hopefully that trend will continue. Also on the East Coast, though, let me kind of break this down real quick. We're looking at bad breathing conditions due to onshore winds on Wednesday and Thursday in areas of high Crania Brevis concentration. Strong offshore winds, on the other hand, on Friday and Saturday could help reduce red tide at a few of the Atlantic beaches. So again, on the Atlantic, Wednesday, Thursday, not the greatest. Friday, Saturday, looking okay. All right, so... These are, these are some things that I would like to see to help us enhance the forecasting and the monitoring of red tide. I'd like to see some real-time water quality monitoring using perhaps some offshore buoys. Wouldn't that be nice to be able to go online, kind of like you can go online and say, hey, the current temperature right now in Orlando is 85 degrees. What if you could go online and see how bad the red tide is at the exact moment with some buoys spread it up and down the Gulf coast or even the Atlantic coast, uh, I think that would be kind of a cool thing. So uh, maybe that's something to look into for the future. Also, it'd be nice to have real-time air quality monitoring with some land-based stations scattered up and down the coast wherever red tide is impacting. So again, just like you could say, hey, it's 82 degrees right now in St. Pete Beach. What if you could go online and say, okay, well, right now at this hour, Crania Brevis, uh, the involved airborne brevitoxins are kind of high so i'm just going to chill out at home and not head to area beaches so real-time monitoring would be really great if we could get that uh, going maybe in the coming years again maybe in the coming years red tide will not be much of an issue especially as it is of right now and would be less of a concern but nonetheless that's some technology that'd be nice to see advance a little bit over the coming years also, I'd like to see more funding for some research so that we can better model where red tide may be initiated or where it may be heading. And very importantly here, too, would be the health impacts that red tide and the airborne brevitoxins uh, will possibly be causing to anybody breathing it in or exposed to the water. 
Also, I'd like to see a reduction in nutrients coming from Lake Okeechobee and the Caloosahatchee River Basins. The Caloosahatchee is a big contributor, and I did include that on purpose. About 60% of the nutrients that are being dumped into the Gulf of Mexico are actually coming from the river basins along the Caloosahatchee. So we really need to cut down on the amount of nutrients, the fertilizers that are being dumped into Lake Okeechobee and the Caloosahatchee, and I think that will greatly reduce red tide's extent and the potency of it if we stop dumping so many nutrients into the Gulf. And obviously, pushing the water into the Everglades would be a better, better case scenario as well. But we need to just reduce the overall amount of fertilizers going into the water either way. All right, guys, that's the latest status update and what to expect over the coming days. I'll have another update as soon as it warrants it. Otherwise, most likely Friday is going to be my next update. Till then, have a great evening and thank you for watching. And also, I do appreciate likes and comments. And if you want to subscribe as well, uh, the more likes and comments I get, the, the more the algorithms push up these posts so that more people can see them. So I always do appreciate that. So, all right. Thanks again. Have a great evening.